All right, guys, welcome back. GM Light here. If you haven't heard, the story kind of blew up, but it's not really anything new. He's been doing this for the last month, but basically Tim Dillon's appearance on Joe Rogan sparked this whole barrage of quotes, you know, because he talked about Joker 2, trashed it, called it the worst movie ever. The hilarious thing is he's been doing this outside of the Joe Rogan podcast for like the last month bring it up on his podcast. He even said it to J.D. Vance, the vice president, that he was in Joker 2, the worst movie of all time, which is hilarious. But I feel like he had kind of a new thought when talking to Joe Rogan about what he thinks the approach was with Joker 2, why it was bad, what went wrong with it, which I think was kind of interesting. That was the interesting portion of what he talked about. This whole thing of Tim Dillon talking shit about Joker 2 is actually an inside joke between me and a buddy. And I'm actually glad to be making a video about this because I kind of wanted to talk about it. It's just so fascinating. It ranges from just comedic tirades about the food that Warner Brothers brought out, the singing, the dancing, all the things that, you know, most people typically talk about when criticizing Joker 2. In my review, you know, like I said, I was very engaged throughout most of the movie, and it mainly was those musical portions that just made me totally zone out and stop caring, stop listening. Like basically once the musical bit started, I was like, okay, I'm gonna tune out for the next few minutes. And then that ending fucking bugged the shit out of me. But the thing I found fascinating about Tim Dillon's criticism of it was that he thinks that the basic approach that Todd Phillips took with Joker 2 was that he wanted to go the complete opposite way of the first one because he believes the audience of the Joker 1 was viewed to be the wrong audience. He thinks that the themes of male rage and nihilism, that kind of stuff, curried favor with the incel crowd. And then Joker 2 was a overcorrection to basically trash the audience that liked the first movie. I'm a little bit 50-50 on it. I kind of see where he's coming from when he says that this is pretty much flipping off anybody who found that movie to be that kind of thing. Movie about a weird, lonely dude lashing out at the world. And Joker 2, in many ways, kind of subverts that bad things happen to him he's shown to be very pathetic narcissistic things happen like what the prison guards did to him almost like people who would put a character like joker on a pedestal telling them to go fuck themselves showing them their god in the most lowly of ways but i honestly don't necessarily see that that way in particular but i feel like that does factor into it i think he's half right on that i see joker 2 as basically todd phillips flipping his middle fingers at any kind of mainstream comic book audience. Doing shit that's so bold and honestly so offensive to anyone who has sensibilities that would make them enjoy that first movie. That's definitely where my criticisms, although I respect what the second movie does, I hate the decisions that it makes steps on my toes many times with the musical stuff, with the ending, with what they choose to do with the Joker character, and I can see that overlapping with what he's talking about with this supposed audience that took the Joker the wrong way and enjoyed it in the way that they weren't supposed to. But like I said, I think it's more of a broad, general flip off to the comic book audience. I don't think Todd Phillips was particularly interested in making a Joker 2. I don't think he would have done it if it didn't make a billion dollars. And I think there's a little bit of truth too with what Quentin Tarantino said in that it's one of those things where he's spending money like the Joker would. Basically pissed away $200 million. They're not getting it back. And I think it just goes deeper than that. It is more than just this simplistic answer of owning the chuds. Although that definitely probably was part of it. Probably part of the calculation. But at the same time, it feels like Todd Phillips was kind of targeting everybody. He just wanted to let everybody down with this movie. I don't know if he just made it for himself. I don't know if he actually really made this movie for anybody. Part of what I think is funny about Tim Dillon's commentary is that I think he put it kind of funny when he called it a quarter billion dollar practical joke. Because in some ways, yes, I don't know how some of these decisions he ever thought were ever going to go over well. They were obviously going to piss people off no matter what. Some of that divisiveness, I think, was a, an active creative choice. And then some of it was a little bit of, I think there was some sort of spite for the audience that made Joker 1 such a success. Whether they're incels, whether they're regular people, whether they're comic book fans, I don't think it mattered entirely to him, but he did make this extremely ridiculous movie 
that was just by design going to alienate you one way or another, no matter what. Basically, unless you just fucking hated that first movie, I don't see how you could unapologetically love the entirety of the second one. Even for me, someone who's a bit more forgiving with it, the musical stuff, the ending, I kind of hate, honestly. Definitely the worst aspects of the movie for me. And there's such odd creative choices. Tim Dillon talked about too, when they were on set, Joker starts breaking out in a song. They're all looking at each other like, what the fuck is this movie? This is gonna bomb. Making Joker 2 a musical is not what the people wanted. I was willing to give it a chance, but I just don't like musicals. They're not my thing. And of course, you know, they didn't win me over with those musical numbers. I attribute the musical stuff more of being out of touch than being the spiteful aspect of making this movie. It's definitely out there, very fucking weird, and uh, it's definitely a choice, just not a choice that I would have made. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Do you think Tim Dillon is right about why Todd Phillips decided to tackle certain things in Joker 2 the way that he did? Was he wrong? Let me know in the comments section. I'd love to hear. I'm GM Light. Have a good one.